to the American Gunfighter Podcast. Hosted by your instructors from Ghost Ring Tactical. With their combined experience in the military, law enforcement, firearms instructing industry, and security, they'll be discussing tactics, training, firearms, and equipment to help you become an even better American gunfighter. Hey everybody, Nick Ryan's here, and welcome to another episode of the American Gunfighter Show. Today, we have Mike and Noah with us. Evening. We have Ryan Romero. Good to be here. And our special guest, Ron Engelman. Shalom. <laughs> All right. Hi. So what are we going to talk about today? We are going to basically, we're going we're gonna to interview Ron here, right? Um, we first met Ron... Uh, at a Krav Maga class, all right? We were convinced to have this gentleman come out to our class out here and uh, basically beat the shit out of us. I mean, I, I don't know how else to, to say it. There is no other way to say uh, it. Right? For four days, uh, teaching us Krav Maga. It was, it was an amazing class. It was the, the, the height of the summer. I think oh most days are about 100 degrees. We're outside. Uh, for what eight hours a day, maybe a little longer. I don't know. It was it's it's it felt longer. It felt longer. Yeah. I just never remember ended. The, it. I remember the pool ended. at the end of the day. It's beautiful. It was beautiful. All right. Um. So yeah. So we wanted to bring Ron on the podcast today. Um. A little about Ron. Give us a little bit of background on the Krav Maga schools or organization that you own, and a little bit about your time uh, or. How long you've been with the IDF? So I guess... So how long you've been doing Krav Maga? I've been doing uh, martial arts since about six years old. Okay. I picked up Krav Maga when I was about 10. Okay. Um, and then I trained it. I was actually living... So I'm originally from Israel. I was born over there, but uh, I moved to the States when I was about four years old. We lived there okay. for about eight years uh, in San Diego. My dad was doing some work over there and out of all places, I actually started Krav Maga in America. No, mm -hmm. uh, at the JCC. You know what that <laughs> nice. is? Yes. That's yes. the Jewish Community Center, for yeah. those of you who don't know. So actually, yeah, my I was doing Kung Fu or something at the time, okay. and Krav Maga, I think, has just arrived in the U.S. And my mother said, ah, oh, there's this Israeli martial art. you got to do this. And I looked at my mom and I said, Bruce Lee doesn't do Krav Maga. <laughs> Jackie Chan doesn't do Krav Maga. <laughs> I'm not doing Krav Maga, but if you know anything about Jewish mothers, you'll know I ended up doing Krav Maga. <laughs> um, and about two years after that, we moved back to Israel, where okay. I live is like ground zero for Krav Maga. That we're, that's the city where it was founded. So I picked up a school over there. I was training all the way, all the way through. When I, joined, uh, when I joined the military, we have compulsory service in yes. Israel. So I think and how old were you when you joined? 18. Straight 18, out of, straight out straight of, out of okay. high school. Everybody okay. does. Um, the, the men do three years of okay. mandatory service. The women do two years. I didn't want to be a Krav Maga teacher. I want to be a combat soldier. So okay. I joined up, uh, equivalent of uh, airborne infantry, um, qualified, went, you know, did, did all my, my combat training and, um, yeah, joined a unit, deployed, did all, all that stuff. Um, and then... I think I was, about, I was already about a sergeant and there started to be a shift where they wanted the combat trainer, the combatives trainers, they wanted people with combat experience because generally you're either a teacher, right, or a warfighter. Okay. And there was a problem because they would bring these instructors that were great at Krav Maga, but they didn't have battlefield experience mm. and it didn't quite translate. So... This was around the second intifada where, like, the time that I joined, it was a very sh big shifting point for the okay. Israeli Defense Force. All my training, all the boot camp, was to train against enemy combatants, um, you know, infantry to infantry tactics against the Syrian commando in the Golan Heights. And then the second intifada broke out, and all we were doing mm. was the type of warfare that we see nowadays, which is deep urban, within civilian populations. We had... Not yeah. the training for that, yeah. so the army started adapting fast. And one of the things was Krav Maga started hand-to-hand -hand combat, became a huge emphasis hmm. because when you're fighting in very close quarters, when you're doing counter-terror, which is generally in very close quarters, Krav Maga is fundamental. So yeah. 
they sent me as a combat soldier, and this is now something that the IDF does. There's professional instructors, and there's Krav Maga instructors, we call it in addition to your roles. So I, I went in, I was still maintained my roles as sergeant, but I was able to certify and do the Krav Maga training, okay. and then come back to my unit. And that was quite helpful, because I got to train, I got to train the soldiers and then deploy with them. So it's, it's mm -hmm. for, as an instructor, it's a very valuable experience because you get to see how the skills that you're teaching work in a real, like yeah. if you're a civilian teacher, you teach your students, you're not going to be there. See, yeah, you're never going to see them actually use it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's w w what I did for three years. I finished, I finished uh, my full-time service and I went to Australia. My dad's, uh, my dad's originally from Australia, so I went over there to study at university. I started teaching Krav Maga. I mean, I tried to get a normal job, mm. Mm. but um, I had my CV. But I, I really wanted to work at a video store. Um, you guys know the movie like Empire Records? Yeah. 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 Yes. Heck yeah. yeah. So I thought it'd be really chill <laughs> to just hang around watching movies that back then video yeah, stores, yeah, yeah. Blockbuster was a thing. So there yeah. I am handing out my CV um, to all these blockbusters in Australia. Now, what do I have to show for my CV? What have I done? You know, I've worked very security roles. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, IDF uh, uh, paratrooper, hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor. I'd like to work. In case so, and I love movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So most people didn't. Yeah, just looked at that and freaked out. One guy. I had an interview with one manager, and he brought me in. He's like, "Look, we hit it off. We sat. We yeah. spoke about movies for about an hour." Um, and then at the end, he's like, look, I got to come clean to you. The reason that, you're, that I, I, your CV stood out is we've been held at, uh, we've been held at knife point about a couple of times the last three months. <laughs> so I said, that, that's okay. I, I can do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, so, so you did your, your three years of mandatory service. And then how does it work over there with your continued service? Mm -hmm. Generally, the men continue doing service up until age... 40 if you're an officer then it's till 46 okay the women generally don't continue doing reserve service um unless they're in speci specific tactical roles and then okay. they will continue doing reserves when we do the reserves it's like it changes all the time but in theory it's supposed to be about uh three weeks a year Okay. Three, three or four, three or four weeks a year. So, and the cycle again. This it never happens this way, but this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. You'll do, uh, you know, one year you'll do training. Year two you'll do training. Year three you deploy, okay. and then like okay. that. So you get deployed. In reality, we did very little training in all deployment because that's what it means. And in between okay. those cycles, every time there's a big conflict or war, which unfortunately okay. has been happening quite often recently, yeah. then we get immediately called in. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's, let's change gears a little bit and then we'll get back to that. Um, so we just finished up uh, day three of our loan operator course. We were lucky enough. Ron's been out with us, uh, training with us, uh, being a student and learning kind of what we're doing over here. So, so my question for you, Ron, is, is what, what do you think about what we're doing here coming from a combat soldier that has seen plenty of, of combat in your time? Um, yeah, your honest opinion. I mean, you can, you can beat us down. You can yeah. tell us that we suck. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, just, yeah, your thoughts. Yeah. I would just love to hear them. Yeah. I'd say first of all, about above anything, it's really fun okay. to be here. Yeah. Like the, the group of people, this is now my second time here mm -hmm. and both times, yeah, the people are just a lot of fun. They come here, they're serious to train hard. Um, yeah, it's just the, the culture and the atmosphere okay. that you have this play, that you have in this place. That 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 is that was my main reason. <laughs> I mean, I, the, the skills and stuff, but it is just I really really enjoyed being here. Um, last time I taught, this time I got to come in as a student. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's been eye opening. There's a lot of new things that I've yeah. learned that we haven't we haven't been trained on. Um, it's beautiful to see, you know, all the equipment and all the stuff. It's, you know, in Israel, we, we get your hand me down. So uh, also in terms of tactics, there's, you know, similar application stuff. But it, yeah, it's really, really nice to see how you guys train. And even like as a civil, I haven't done any civilian training. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's so beautiful to come to, 
you know, a civilian and, and just see the, the level, the quality of instruction, the experience that you've got going. So I've got a lot that I'm, uh, that I'm taking back home with me. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm coming back. Well, <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, what is, what do you like coming out here better? Do you like coming out here better as an instructor or do you like coming out here as a student? Uh, just your, your, I know cause it's completely different. Yeah. It's like when I take yeah. classes compared to when I'm teaching, yeah. uh, like I know some of these, some of the newer guys that came on as instructors, I remember one of my guys, he came, he's like, what, why am I so much more tired being an instructor See, oh, yeah, being yeah, a yeah, student? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, I thought I'd, I thought this would be easy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's my, my job. I, I travel around the world yeah. a lot in Israel and I teach hand to hand combat, Krav Maga. And yeah, no, no question. Like uh, it, it's such a, um, what's, what's the word? It's such, such a privilege to come in and be a student. Like yeah. I love learning. I, I think if you don't love learning, yeah. you have no reason being, a, you have no, not reason. You have no justification, no right to be a teacher. Yes. Cause you got to I be, agree. cause knowledge develops and keeps on going and like even me the stuff in in in, in krav maga the stuff that i'm teaching nowadays is so different from what i was taught not even 10 years ago even a year yeah. ago all the time my knowledge goes and develops and if i can go and soak and you know absorb information but yeah i love to learn the moment you go no no i'm done learning oh. i know everything that means you know nothing like yeah. it's it's the what is the dunning kruger principle right yeah. i don't know <laughs> sure. i don't know you yeah. tell me yeah so you're you crown, crown eater the, yeah no i know yeah. 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 yeah so the air force guys don't know yeah, yeah. it's yeah it's such a especially the world of combat no. they're just so deep and so chaotic and there's just so much there it's it's never ending so i love what i do and i love i love being a student even when i'm teaching we, we have a saying you know all the uh, uh you know jewish scripts we say that from every one of my teachers, I've learned something, but I've learned more from my colleagues and I've learned the most from my students. Mm. So even as an instructor, yeah. I'm constantly learning. You learn so much by being a teacher. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's fun not to worry about all the time. <laughs> I see you all the time. It's like, okay, are we 15 oh, yeah. minutes late? We're 15 <laughs> minutes late. What's happening with lunch? Right, this gear isn't working and stuff. And sometimes it's just nice to be in the passenger yes. seat and, yes. and to go. But yeah, as a teacher, because <laughs> yeah. you your brain it's is just going, working. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard work. This is, this is fun. Well, good. This is fun. Good. 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 All right. All right. So let's, uh, let's change those gears back. Um, we're going we're gonna, to... We're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get deep, you guys. We are gonna ask some some serious questions. Um, I know for myself, uh, the conflict uh, going over on overseas, okay, Israel, Gaza, all that good stuff. Um, I mean, how do you how do you even word this? It's it, it's interesting to me to to see um, what's happening. Um, I think it's gonna be great to hear from from the source instead of us hearing from all these media sources. We don't know. We don't know yeah. what's, what's true. We don't, we, we have no idea. We have Agenda. no idea how the media our especially our media puts the spin on things. Okay. So we're going to get deep here. Ask Ron, uh, some, some, some pretty good questions. And uh, I think this is going to be a very, very interesting. Yeah. Conversation. Uh, uh, I think for good reason, it's interesting. And I'll, I'll tell you why okay. I think it's really important. Before the Americans went into Iraq, mm -hmm. I, I, was, I, was, I was in service full time. I was probably 19, 20 years old. I can't remember. And all of a sudden, all these American specialists started popping around the base and talking to our officers and to commanders. And they were coming to learn how you fight within these dense urban populations against terrorists because we'd been doing, doing it, it for, for, so for a while that's yeah. where the how you use like d9s and you guys know what the d like you yeah. also know yeah 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 the, the bulldozers yeah the big yep. big armored bulldozers mm -hmm. how you use those in the combat center because that's exactly what we're doing and i generally say like yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's spiritual, you know, Israel is the epicenter for, for Christianity, for like, somehow everything kind of starts there, whether it's religion or whether, and, you know, it goes the same for combat. Yeah. So, you know, they were hijacking Israeli airplanes well before 9-11, right? Yeah. So generally what you'll see happen in Israel, 
Sooner or later, it, it'll pop up around the world. Before they were ramming into, before they blew up uh, trains in Spain and in the UK, they were doing that in Israel. Mm. Before the, you, you guys were dealing with IEDs and Afghan yeah. stuff, yeah. we'd been doing it for, and, um, you know, we saw with the, um, um, the lone wolf, like when somebody will take it, you guys, it hasn't been so much in America, but in Europe, in France, it happened when, you know, a guy will take a, a truck and just plow oh, through, yeah. What's happened here uh, as well? through civilians. Yeah. 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 And, and, now, and now the big thing, especially in Europe, is lone wolf stabbing attacks. Yes. So we see it in France yeah. where some guy just, you know, gets indoctrinated from, um, you know, watching TikTok Instagram and just, there's no intel. You, you wouldn't know. It just just grabs a knife and goes to playground and starts stabbing yeah. kids. That, that happened in France and all mm-hmm. this stuff. So, yeah, so I say, you know, it's, we're not so happy about it, right. but, like, l- l- but we're generally first. So it's yeah. a good, like as tech, it would be as Americans or as Europeans, it's very good to kind of see what's happening in Israel because yeah. it's, it, it's coming. Tactically. Yeah. What can mm-hmm. we, what can yeah. we learn? What can we take away? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, my first question for you is, where were you on October 7th when the, the, this invasion happened? Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy that, that, like, you know, you asked me this, this question because yeah. I know that that's the American question, right? Everybody asks, where were you? 9-11. At 9-11. Exa- exactly. Right. Exactly. Like, I, I'm almost, you know, it's almost goose yeah. bumps, but yeah. yeah, that's now, that's that's, now a question yeah. that you ask Israelis. Where were you on, on October, October 7th? 7th? Yeah. So uh, October 7th was a Saturday. It was, uh, it was a Jewish holiday. Um, I was, uh, I was just, my parents live not far. We, we live in the same kind of, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a village, somewhere between a village and a suburb. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we live so, uh, about half an hour north of Tel Aviv on the coast. Okay. Pretty central, pretty central Israel. And yeah, we just, I was there. I, don't, I was there with my wife and my kids, my parents, they were playing with my kids, with their grandkids and um, yeah, and all of a sudden, I, I don't quite remember all the bit, but all of a sudden, okay, something in the news or, okay. or something on the radio and stuff, and okay, there's a big attack happening in the south. Now we've had, we've so there are a lot of rockets. That we, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like okay. you get this all the time. It's like when do you take it like yeah. seriously? Okay, yeah, okay. That, so yeah. there are rockets down yeah. the south. Okay, something's heating up, and I, I don't. And then okay, it's going, and then I think when it was couple of hours when we understand that there was a ground invasion going on that that never happened and did, and did you get this information pretty quickly like you pretty in the news found out so it's it, it, the way it played out was this the news was just like dripping information now i don't know if that was or by design okay or that's how it kind of folded out but at the beginning you hear okay there are 10 casualties Mm. Okay, and then you hear, okay, there are twenty casualties, and that's shit. That's crazy. Twenty casualties, like, like you could yeah. Now, yeah. now looking back, you understand what happened. But being at the time, like nobody imagined the scope of things. Like I've I've served down on the Gazan border uh, quite a few times, and I've had times when you know they come out of the terror tunnels, and you know they've kidnapped soldiers or killed a few people, and the scenarios that you train for is maybe you know. 20 terrorists coming out of a tunnel and taking maybe, you know, doing, doing a, you guys called active shooting, yeah. but, but like mm-hmm. with 20, yeah. 20 terrorists yeah. running around shooting. Okay. That's, that's, that never happened to that extent, but that's the kind of stuff that you kind of know. Once the news was like, okay, they've taken over this military base or something like that. That's, and they're still talking about like 30 casualties. I, 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 so also in every, in Israel, everybody, my mom served, she was an officer, my dad was an officer. So, and also in Israel, the public would generally like, so I'm going all over the place. All right. One one of the things that we we say is like, you know, if you have some sort of, if you get into an accident, Israel is a very good place to get into accident because we have the highest uh, proportion of the population area anywhere in the world of people who are medically trained mm. because people okay. go through military yeah, training the amount of medics and you guys like, can uh, you guys get does everybody get medical training when they go through the service some level of medical training some level okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but, yeah. but even, like that. even if you just look at how many people are combat medics in yeah. uh, compared to the population okay. of israel but I, I digress 
for a second. What I'm saying is that even with, with my mom, like I can have discu- like tactical discussion to some level. My mom certainly wasn't an operator, yeah. would, but like you can have, and I go to my mom, the moment I heard that a uh, military base was, was, overrun, was overrun, I'm like, yeah. this, this is in the hundreds. And mm-hmm. she goes, no way. Like you, mm. you can't, uh, you, you can't imagine. So that's how the information came for okay. it came drip by drip. And you kind of understand it then towards, so the, it, it kicked off around 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. Um, when they started, was so, there, was there anybody, was there any news crews like filming what was happening as was happening? I, like we, again, I, I hate relating this back to yeah. like our nine 11, but you know, like we had our, you know, people filming as planes were flying yeah, into yeah. buildings and but stuff. There like was stuff, but all, uh, the, the news was very chaotic, obviously okay. and scattered. So different from, from, uh, um, from uh, September 11th, which happened in uh, two locations, mainly right yep. in the Pentagon, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. th- this is a whole front of different okay. different villages and different settlements and different bases and everything that's attacked. So yeah, there, there was news, like there were news crews that got caught up here, there. There were, but it's all at this point, like in the morning, it was still very chaotic. Mm-hmm. In the afternoon, it was already okay. There's already battles, and, and we kind of okay. know which areas they've they've taken over and where they're fighting and which bases are overrun. So there's a little bit more more information over there. I think this might be a good point to kind of uh, shift to what was actually happening. Sure. Right? Sure. So, so in essence, it was chaos. Didn't quite understand what was happening. It was, I think it was about two, two or two and a half days until the situation really kind of stabilized, until most of the terrorists were inside of Israel were eliminated until we, look, there's no way to say it. This southern part of Israel was conquered. Okay. And until we mm-hmm. were able to take back ground, and it's funny, you talk about ground, but this isn't ground. These are cities yeah. and villages yeah. Yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. Th- these are places yeah. that you call overrun. They weren't overrun. They were conquered by the enemy. Okay. And until we were able to conquer them back, um, you know, with mm. civilians inside, hiding inside bomb shelters and things like that. So what actually happened? Um, there were three waves. Okay. So first... Maybe even let's go back. The Israeli, the intelligence fault, I don't even know, how, like it's major, major failure on the part on of the, the intelligence. The intelligence. Okay. But the IDF, like mm-hmm. many modern armies, have been doing a switch to have a smaller and more intelligent army. So mm-hmm. much more reliance on intelligence, on observation, on, okay. on technology, Right. So instead of having, you know, a soldier on the lookout, you have cameras, right, everywhere on the border, okay. overseeing, overseeing everything. You have signal intelligence, you have all this stuff, and, and it becomes reliant on that. And, you know, you have the Iron Dome to take out missiles. So instead of taking out the terrorists, you go, okay, no, because we, we, that involves civilian casualties. Okay. We're relatively safe. We'll build bomb shelters to protect our civilians. We'll build the Iron Dome. And that's, uh, in my opinion, that's really what led, and we're going to continue suffering from that, because instead of, when the enemy's shooting at you, instead of going and destroying it, you're like, no, no, I'm just going to bunker down even more. Mm. And then they built this, so th- the tunnels was a big thing. That was the previous thing, tunnels going from Gaza into Israel. Right. And then, you know, the best minds went into it, and they built an underground barrier. So there's some technology thing. I, I don't, you know, I'm, okay. I'm a grunt. But, you know, with, with concrete underneath, with different seismic things, and understand that there's no way you can get underneath it, right? Hmm. So they're thinking, we've got discovered, right? They're not going to bury underneath it. So th- there's not really a big threat of terrorists coming in from Israel. There's the rockets. And, but, but they're not dumb. They're very sophisticated in, you know, in, in terror. Like, they, they spent every ounce and all, their, all, all the humanitarian aid, all the money that goes into Gaza is funneled directly. So this is a project that, you know, that, that probably billions of dollars into the infrastructure that was needed to carry out October 7th. Mm. So what actually happened? In Israel, you have an army that's more or less dwindling. They say, okay, we think we've got this Gaza thing under control. We're mm. able to deal with the rockets, right? We have soldiers on bases, but we don't need that much soldiers because... We have all the cameras. We have all the you know special special fences. So leaning, special leaning too much on 
technology and that 100 percent. okay okay so you have dwindled forces over there because you've got it covered with the technology well what was the first thing that we, they did they sent syrian drones sorry not uh, iranian drones okay and, and just like they used look it's not official but it's the tactics that were used over there let's say it's not a coincidence that it's the same tactics that are being used in Ukraine. These are Russian tactics. There's no question okay, okay. that Russians, yeah. uh, like the Iranians are directly behind this, but the Russians pull the, pull the strings the over there. Okay. So exactly like you see in Afghanistan, they're dropping, the first thing they do, they, the they send the drones and they drop it on top of uh, the visual, like the, all the cameras okay. and all the, all the uh, um, radars and all so the So they were using the drones to take out the cameras first. Uh, drones, mortars, anti-tank okay, missiles. Okay. But yeah, they take, out the, they take out the technology at the same time that they're raining missiles on all the bases, okay. mortars on all the bases, on all the cities. So this is a coordinated attack of everything. Now, you know, uh, what do you... And this is, this is, this is again, one of the, one of the stupid... What do you, so you have missiles coming in. What do you do as a soldier when you're in a base? Okay, you go into the bunker. Into the bunker. No. So right. So now, yeah, there's still short soldiers outside, but much less because you don't want the soldiers to get injured, right? So this now sets up the scene perfectly for three waves, and this is important to understand okay. how it went out. The first wave was the Nukba forces, the highly trained Hamas special. It's funny to call them special forces. Because they're death squads. Okay. They're not there to fight. So their, their specialty is killing civilians. That's exactly what they go and to. And that around. was the first wave. So that's the first wave. Okay. Highly, highly armed. You saw this on TV. Mm. Um, just like in Afghanistan, they've got the Toyota, the white Toyota Hilux, Hilux, Hilux. with the mechs, yeah. with the machine guns wow. on the front, plowing through. Um, and that was about a thousand... Um, a thousand Hamas trained everything very highly coordinated they all had maps they all knew exactly where they were going a lot of information so it was about, you it was about a thousand of them there were a thousand okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. of mechs coming in on motorcycles everything and every group knew exactly where they were going um, from whether they were attacking the bases where they were, to they were going to take control of, of, a, of a civilian residential okay. area whether they're in the city and they know exactly uh, where they're going in a very well coordinated attack to the level that they went from house. They even knew they had maps. They knew who lived in what really? house. Okay. And again, I can go so deep into this, but one of the things, again, that Israel got wrong, they thought, okay, Hamas, they were smart. So in Gaza, there's the Hamas, there's the Islamic Jihad, and there's a lot of different terrorist fa factions. Mm -hmm. And the last rounds we had were with Jihad, with the Islamic Jihad. They're, they're all awful, but um, and Hamas kind of stayed out of it because Hamas is the ruling authority in Gaza. Okay. People don't understand that Hamas is democra democratically elected, was democratically elected over I've, there. I've heard, yeah. yeah, yeah. They run all the government, they run all that, you know, just Hamas is the ruling entity in that. People refer to it as a terrorist organization, and they're certainly a terrorist organization, but they're the and army, the government. elected government, everything. Mm -hmm. And then you have jihad, and I think that's a mistake, because, okay, so you're saying, okay, we're going to do this round, we're going to fight this round with jihad. So the jihad are, are launching the rockets, and Israel is, is, is hitting jihad targets, and they're like, let's hope Hamas, you know, let, let's keep things quiet, because that's what, that's what the governments want. They don't, people don't want war. That's not good. They want quiet so if we can settle mm. this in a lower Scuffle. lower thing yeah instead of taking out the enemy no let's let's mi minimize minimize the conflict so yeah they so hamas comes in um and ah i was saying so their strategy the israeli government mm -hmm. they're saying we're going to start giving um uh, working visas to people from gaza to come into israel to work because if we can improve their social economic status, they're going to have more to lose, right? So if we have if we have thousands of workers that Rel we background relying check, on working that we in background Israel. check that okay. come into Israel and make money, now money is coming back to Gaza, right? They're paying their I don't know taxes or bakshish. I don't know how it works in Gaza, <laughs> but okay. And now there's going to be pressure on Hamas. Not to launch an attack because it's going to hurt their, people. Their people. Okay. But okay. what the Israeli government felt is that these people are deeply religious people. 
and they're not motivated. We're Westerners. I want a better life. I want a better salary. I want peace for my children. That's what I want. But if you're deeply religious and you believe that your God commands you first and foremost to kill such and such or to take over this land or whatever, we won't yeah. get too much into politics now. I'm sure we will later. But, uh, you know, more, more of a paycheck or to live in the dirt doesn't does, doesn't care we sort of guess that the people aren't motivated by this financial stuff so why am why am i telling you this because the people coming in to work at the meantime they're documenting everything mm. right so they had a array of information of everything so when they went into the they knew like if they were working and doing um um, you know, renovations or painting a house for somebody, all this information gets relayed back. Okay. That together with things like TikTok, right? So there, there's stuff that's... Uh, so there's a video that, we, that, that was shown to soldiers. So you have silly things that you don't think about, right? They're, you know, so we said, I joined the army when I was 18 years yeah. old, right? So you have 18, 19 year old kids serving in the army and you have some girls who, I don't know, work as, a, you know, in the army, they're... Um, a secretary okay. for something, and they're doing their little TikTok dance, completely uh, innocuous, right? Uh, That's the word, in, innocuous, mm, like yeah, arm, yeah, artists. Yes. Yeah. yeah, innocuous. They're just doing their TikTok dance in the uniform, just in a parking lot on the base, right? But then zooms in, and you can see, see there's a signpost: uh, Commander's Headquarters, left, Command Center, mm. right. And, and and then when you piece all these things together, now. Hamas don't have that sophistication, but Iran certainly do mm. at that sort of scope. And, you know, we know whose side China is on too, but I don't want to get too, I don't want to get my, <laughs> it's not a tinfoil hat, but, but it's, yeah, we, we yeah. know, like, yeah. So, yeah. so when they're, when, so when this first wave goes in, they know exactly where they're going. They know exactly where they're attacking. They know exactly when they get into the military base. They know exactly where the command center is. They know everything when they're going in. So first, they break down the fence, and they go in, and they control land. They control major, very sophisticated, they control major junction sections. So even when the, when the um, um, relief forces, or whatever you call it, coming in, they're getting ambushed on the way in on the main intersections in okay. Israel, right? This is real war happening, but inside the country, inside a civilian area, where, I, I mean, people think that Israel is a war zone. Where, no, like... We get rockets, but it's not yeah. a war zone. It yeah. would be like, imagine like in your, in your town where yeah. you live. Yeah. All of a sudden, there are terrorists on an intersection ambushing the soldiers and the police as, as they're coming in. The second wave, and, and that was coordinated. They knew exactly what was happening. But you have a lot of different factions, like the jihad, mm -hmm. and like a lot of armed, uh, hamula, we say, armed um, tribes. Like okay. within, I don't know if tribe is, is exactly, but a lot of armed, uh, it's... Hamula is like a family, right? But the family could be like a thousand people, okay. like okay. In, in, in the Middle Eastern factions. culture. Yeah, factions, exactly. Yeah. So you have the factions. Um, so the factions didn't know about this. It was all planned to uh, top tier, like a, 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 to about a thousand people. And even a lot of the soldiers had been training, but they didn't know exactly what they were training for. Only the commanders. And then they got the orders about an hour before, like oh, the really? ground soldiers. And then... They went in like the commanders do, but the ground soldiers, they they've been get, trained they to do stuff. Right. But then, then they're like, okay, guys, this is what we're training. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. This is our attack. Let's go. Okay. Like last minute, you're saying like, you saying like yeah, an hour beforehand, yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah. hey, we're going. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. How do you keep such a, such a big operation a secret? Secret. Okay. Yeah. You I'm don't sorry. tell them until the last yeah. minute. Okay. So once, okay. once they, once they now hold the land, they get the word out to anybody armed in Gaza, the fence is down. Come in. No, come in. Okay. And now they're coming in, and, and that, that was also about a thousand people, right? Okay. And the third wave were civilians. So you got the first wave of a thousand well trained people, uh, another wave of a thousand middle trained. No, no, you have jihad. So you have different okay. terrorist organizations. They're not in. How well Hamas. trained are they? Uh, I didn't. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 And said, "Don't." Yeah. But yeah, they're they're, they're well armed. Well, you know, 
Like the, the guys who came in, they came with a ton of weapon, with grenades, things like that. Okay. Generally, you don't think about it, like, especially oh. our fighting. You know, we're thinking of fighting terrorists. Okay, maybe, you know, two guys with some submachine guns. But these guys came with grenades and RPGs okay. and, and everything. They're taking out vehicles. They're taking armored vehicles mm. out to... Uh, out when you're coming in. Now, the third wave is interesting of civilians. Yeah. So we're talking like, you see it every, so everything I'm telling you is documented. Like they it came is. in with GoPros. I've they put everything oh, no, on no, no, no. We've he, all seen it. Yeah, I, saw, said, I was said, sending him he sent me video after video after video. I after phone, video. He, I, like we're splicing stuff together, just yeah. all the videos yeah. that he was sending yeah. me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, on an intersection and you're yeah. just driving along, you're every day yeah. and then all of a sudden terrorists are right there, right in front of you, taking your car, shooting you. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, There's crazy, yeah. crazy stuff that, that happened. Now, the civilians that are coming in, you have old men with crotches coming in. You've got like a six-year-old with, or a seven-year-old with, with a stomach this big in his like uh, uh, galabia, like the Arabic dress, with a sword like coming in. You've got people coming in with drill, like with, with crowbars, with whatever they mm. can just to steal, to loot, to rape. To kill. Part of now, it. Ha, now, also, you have to understand that this was, it's all by design. So how do you get civilians prepared for this? They don't know exactly what's happening, but it, this happens in the mosques, right? Okay. So for a couple of years before, this thing was probably planned for about two years. Okay. This is what, and so, f- f- so yeah. for two years, what they're doing is in the mosque, they're saying it's okay, religiously, it's pardoned by, by uh, Allah, to kill the Jews. It's pardonable to take their belongings. It's pardonable to rape and to make them their, their con- concubines, to defile them. Because it, so they're preparing the civilians um, uh, theologically. I don't know what. what uh, I was going to say it's, it's more conditioning, conditioning than, than preparing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the, it, that becomes the culture, that becomes yeah. the accepted behavior, that becomes the norm. Yeah. And so that, like, yeah, why wouldn't I cross this yeah. border and beat someone to death with a crowbar? Yeah. yeah. It just becomes and, and the, the norm. And then yeah. they say for every person that you bring back, so for every kidnap, every hostage that you take, you get $10,000 and you get an apartment. There aren't right. that many That's apartments right. left in Gaza, but they didn't know <laughs> back, yeah. back, back, back then. But so these now people, it's, it's open season. Yeah. It's, you know, the Messiah has come. Hallelujah. You know, the Zionists have been destroyed. Let's go in. And, you know, God, God has made a miracle for us. Now let's go. And a lot of the brutality, a lot, and that's what people, I think, don't realize. A lot of the rape, a lot of the massacres, a lot of the beheadings, the kidnappings. This wasn't just Hamas. These were people. You see children. You see children coming in from Gaza. You see they're stealing bikes. But they, they bring back anything they can get their, their, their hands no, 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 no. on. I remember I watched, some, I watched videos mm-hmm. of like these little like seven-year-olds. You know, saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to go kill Jews. I'm going to go. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, these little- yeah, parents holding their children with the headbands. Yeah, and these about, little kids. Of course, I would teach my child. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was I watched this and I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah. So if we step away from the moral side of it, which is obviously you got to understand that this is something very coordinated, mm-hmm. very planned out. Um, the purpose and also very pur- like. Iran sacrificed Hamas, right? The, the Palestinians, they don't care about them. The, 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 uh, the Iranians are, are Shiite, the Palestinians are Sunni. They, the Sunni, they hate each other anyways. Yeah. This was just... But Israel was about to make peace with Saudi Arabia, right? Now, Saudi Arabia are Sunni. Mm-hmm. So the Palestinians. So if you bond. can have, like... Well, basically, we were about to have peace... We're not having peace with Saudi Arabia, and it'll take a while until the, it was a big threat for them and mostly okay, yeah. for Russia. Yeah. If this peace was, because that would have cut out their uh, their gas pipeline that they mm. that that they have. So there's a lot. There's much bigger yeah. factors in play mm-hmm. here than mm-hmm. just the I mean, you know, we, the Palestinians yeah. uh, to some extent, and even the Israelis to some extent were were pawns in yeah. this uh, in this game. Another thing also that's important to understand a lot of these people coming in were on drugs. So um, it, the, the, the victims were documented. They, they saw like the terrorists snorting. Like they, how do you get people to, to go for days on and fighting mm. and to carry off these like, yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
they raped they raped girls like i'm talking about like 10 year old girls they burnt families mm-hmm. alive in their house they tied them up and they burnt them alive they beheaded they cut open pregnant women yeah. and, and they documented all of this yeah um i i would think that it's it's more than just some of it is just blind hate and and other of it is but again it's all it's again if you zoom out away from the atrocity it's all very well orchestrated planned it's by design so so being i don't mean to interrupt but being a movie buff i keep going back to this in my head and this is a, maybe a stupid analogy but shawshank redemption where he's just digging that hole through the wall one mm. one piece at a time emptying one pocket of dirt at a time right it's that end goal it's that long plan the long yeah. term plan. they've invested billions Bill, while the people are starving they've invested billions like the war that's happening now the infrastructure there's more tunnels underground in gaza than there is in new york city subway <laughs> right and gaza is a fraction of the size of new york yeah yeah so and they did this whole project within the scope of about two or three years really the guys in new york should hire the, them <laughs> because you know in normal places so a lot, yeah, a lot of years, money yeah. years, a lot yeah. of planning and a lot of like that like we, we say this as is israeli is like we're almost like if they put half of the money and half of the energy in trying to build some sort of economy and some sort of like, like they're, they're very smart and talented people like I, I say that truly from the side like to carry out that sort of, if they would have put that into economical project, yeah. they'd be like Singapore. Yeah. We say that a lot here in the, in the States too, where it's like, you know, there'd be these news stories about criminals and drug smuggling. Like if you, if you put half your efforts into doing something positive, just imagine, just imagine, just imagine how successful yeah. you could be oh. as opposed to running drugs and, you know, selling guns. And but I think that just that the, they have the culture with this, with, with, Developing that type of conditioning of hate yeah. is, is, I mean, when I was watching those videos and these little kids and just, just the hate in their eyes, it was, it was, it's taught. It was crazy. It's yeah. Taught. Just listening to that. It has yeah. to be taught. There's no other way. It yeah. Come, that doesn't come naturally. Yeah. Yeah. It's some, I was listening to, um, um, a Palestinian who was raised within Hamas mm-hmm. and he left. And he's actually moved to Israel, and he left the fa- he left Islam, and um, and he converted to Judaism. And he speaks a little bit about what it was like growing up in Gaza. Okay. And besides the fact, like we know that you know from the, they're indoctrinated from a very early age, um, you know, with with the hate and with all that. But it's like again, it's sophisticated. He was saying of a, a thing that they knew that they were going to die. Like the holiest thing that they could do was to be killed for now we look at this some of it is i don't think it's romantic but like you know we think about you know us we're all warriors we think of yeah okay yeah we're gonna die in battle yeah, that, yeah. and go to valhalla yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay maybe whatever like if y- y- you guys are all rolling your eyes because you're all no. being no no, no i say yeah. that because you've been combat soldiers yeah. right you know that that's a silly notion it's romantic if you're watching vikings it's really cool and movies in real life you don't want to die in combat you don't want to die like yeah. like i have kids i want to grow up i want to raise them i know what i know what kids grow up like when i have two daughters mm-hmm. i don't want daughters who grow up without a father yeah. so I'm, there's no romanticism that and but we're talking about kids kids yeah. who want to die in the you know killing jews now so you're saying how that's also achieved like they got them to go to the graveyard, like as a, not, not like kids on a dare, like mm-hmm. as a school trip, they go with the imam and they lie in a grave wow. and everybody stands around them and they eulogize them and they say, you're already dead, right? In this world, hmm. right? And now you just have to go and finish, complete your destiny, right? So wow. again, I'm saying this is, yeah. we, we think of our enemy as, you know, just simple minded, stupid, whatever. It's sophisticated. It's hmm. evil. But it's sophisticated. It's it's interesting you say that, and and you know I've, I've been five combat deployments to Afghanistan. Um, same, my my kids were were pretty young, um, but for me it was I I did the same thing for myself, 
right? So I was combat rescue, Afghanistan, flying helicopters, getting shot at constantly. Um, and, and it was right. It was that acceptance, um, because otherwise, what do you do? Right. It, it can't be, it, I have a job. I, I can't be focused on these things. I put it in a box. I push it down. I don't talk about it and we move on. Um, and it's interesting to hear that same process, that same talk where it's like for evil, for good, for whatever. And when we talk about that here in, in class, right, the fundamentals, the basics, the building blocks, that, that is that building block of, of cutting that emotional tie, cutting that, that, that nag, that, that fear, that caution, the, the, whatever it is to achieve a goal, whatever that goal is. So it's just interesting to hear from, from, from both sides of that but, equation. But there's a difference between understanding that you have a job and it's possible that you're going to be get killed in the process and it's not going to stop you from doing your job to embracing death and running towards it and hoping for it, accepting it as an, an, as an inevitability. And the, the, yeah. not even, yeah, it's not, it's a potential. This is the end desirable goal, result. That's the goal. Yeah, that's yeah. the goal. Yeah, no, the very true. Very true. The goal is and to death. kill yes. as many people yeah. yes. as you can in the process. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, it's heavy enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good start. Um, you blew so, all my questions out of the water, by the way. Yeah, I'm like, man, yeah. we've gone. <laughs> so, I still want to know some things. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, my next question would be for you: um, Did you get orders from the government to return to service? And how does and how did how did that work for a lot of people? Yes. I mean, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, no, I would say, but yeah. I mean, you're, you're an older guy. Yeah, I am. You know, I am. <laughs> compared, compared, yeah, we're all good. Hey, whoa, we're all, whoa, whoa, let's we're not. I mean, we got the yeah, yeah, easy, easy. Yeah. youngins here, but uh, yeah. but it's like I mean, I know that you have you guys have a lot of younger uh, generation that that is currently actively serving. But for a guy like you, mm-hmm. that you yeah, you've been out of active service for for a while. You've still doing your reserve stuff, but yeah, how does that work with with now? Are they are they calling you back? It's like yeah, how does that work? Okay, so I, I said before that, you know, reserve service is compulsory for men until the age of 40. Mm-hmm. In theory. In, in, no, no. In, in, How old are you, Ron? I'm 42. Okay. In practice, in practice, um, look, not everybody is necessary or required, mm-hmm. right? We certainly need a war fighters. That's always, but a lot of the times, if you know, if you're not doing a very important role, or if you know, you you're something, you know, in computers or, or like mm. something, it's like okay, supply, yeah, supply, support. Say, yeah. They, yeah. They you don't got to be the tip okay, of the spear. Yeah, they say, <laughs> yeah. okay, th- thank you, we're good. Yeah. No, but but this is very common. A very few of my friends, even until even reached till forty, doing it. The majority of my friends didn't. Okay. Right. Also, the majority of my friends are not war like. The majority of my friends from that I grew up with weren't combat soldiers, just because. I mean, what's the what's the percentage in the American Army? How many are war fighters? Oh, compared the, to yeah, can, oh yeah. my god, like, like less than ten. Yeah. So yeah, yeah like one like percent of the population enlists, and then I mean, depending on your service, right? You're talking yeah. like single digit percentages. Yeah. yeah, we consider the tip of the spear, right? As opposed to the yeah. all that support. Yeah, all network. the support. people yeah. that just support yeah. Yeah. Though, that exactly. tip. Yeah. So it, it, so it's the same thing. It's the same thing anywhere. And so, yeah, the majority of my friends, you know, weren't even called up, okay. you know, to, to continue reserves. Maybe they did a year or two. Now, also, being infantry, so I, I infantry, yeah. to be even infantry, you wear down. So, you know, for my year that went into the, you know, my buddies that went in, that I went through boot camp together with them, I go in, we, we made it, we were sent to the same reserve unit, about 30 of us. Okay. You know, and what is it? 20 something years later, there are about five or eight of us. Okay. Left, like made it all the way to 40. Okay. Because, you know, it starts with, okay, you get sick of doing all the marches or getting, because all the time also you're getting called away from your job. Yeah. You know, imagine you're, um, you guys have this too, I guess, jury duty, right? Jury yeah. duty, yeah, jury it's jury. compulsory. Yeah, sure. yeah, imagine you're, you know, you run your business, you have a painting company, or you're a doctor, or you're a plumber, and every year for three weeks, they say, okay, jury duty. 
leave your you'll get paid not much but you'll get paid and you do and you three leave you do your, all your three job. weeks at once yeah yeah well it's not even yeah I, I might be missing it's not exact sometimes it can be five no sorry generally it's six weeks but in practice a lot of the time it, okay. it used to come like our reservist weeks. program what is what is our reserves you know, like one weekend a month a weekend a month two weeks, two a, weeks year. a year yeah yeah so that's kind of like how our reserve okay. programs work yeah. yeah so what happened with a lot of my friends you know I think it's difficult or, you know, they either stop and mm. it's not too hard to get out of it. You either say, oh, I have some knee problems or, you know, if you're good or you say, look, this isn't from like, for, I had a friend who for like political, he's a big pacifist and for, okay. said, okay. okay. And they generally don't give you too much of a fight on that, on, on the, on the reserves. Or I had a lot of friends who said, okay, this isn't for me. They transitioned to the kitchen and then after a while, they kind yeah. of moved on. So very few of us. So where does this catch me? Um, so this broke up s- when I hit 40. Now I'm on volunteer status, right? Mm, so it's okay. no longer compulsory. Okay. Okay. I told my unit that I'd continue to serve. Um, but I said, look, I, I want to focus on teaching Krav Maga. So I stayed in my unit and I, I left my, my, the combat company and they put me in the headquarters company of the same brigade same battalion yeah. same thing but now you know i'm not a door kicker i'm more auxiliary you know in the i guess you guys have the same thing but you know yeah, you're an instructor yeah, in combat yeah. a combat battalion made of, is made out of maybe four or five companies and then you have okay. four fighting companies and mm-hmm. you have one support company support, yeah that's where you have you know your munitions that's where you have the guys who fix the the jeep that's where you have yeah. the, the command center that's where you have the you know all yep. the all the stuff that goes in to support it so i'm i'm now a krav maga instructor Part of that's that. what okay. i do okay. i teach t- tactical first aid and krav maga so this thing breaks out saturday morning saturday night our unit gets called okay um and you know we get called in and now you have to understand the mindset of what's happening now in israel and i think this is it's interesting, like, okay. you know, everything. It's all crazy, but now, in hindsight, it's very different from what the feeling is like when this is going down. So Hamas is, and, and like, the s- southern part of Israel on the Gaza border has been conquered, right? It's still conquered. The, the bases are overrun. The bases that are in control so of Hamas. It's still conquered. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. Still conquered. Yeah, Saturday night, it's still conquered. It took about two and a half days until we were able to... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. But yeah. Not, so, not, so, not, no, 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 I was thinking... Not like, think, I was like, thinking today, no, currently, no, right no, now. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm talking about this is when I'm getting when, called. When, yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. So, the South, and, and we're sitting, what's going on? Where the hell is the army? Like, how, how is it possible? What's happening? Yeah. How is this possible? Not just, ha- not just how this happened, but how is this still happening? How is it that, you know, 14 hours later, we still haven't secured, we haven't been able to, to fight and beat them back? And, and then you have all kinds, like, there's all these battles going on. There's, um, you know, um, uh, an area where Hamas took, you know, 20 people and are holding them hostages in this kibbutz. There's another, uh, an apartment in the city where two people are held hostage. Mm. There's a poli- uh, police station, which is, you know, controlled and has gun- gunmen happening. So there's, and then there's all these open areas where we don't know exactly who's what. So this is also my unit. Okay, so that's what's happening in the South. Now, we know Hezbollah is about to get into this fight, right? They're not, you know, so we've got the northern border over there. Now, Hezbollah is a hundred times more powerful as far as firepower, okay. as far as capabilities, as far as everything they have compared to Hamas. Can you just, uh, real quick, because I know a lot of people might yeah. get confused, uh, distinguish between Hezbollah and, and Hamas. Okay, so Hamas is in, uh, in Gaza and to some extent in the West Bank, although in 2001, we mainly, no, we, we pretty much annihilated Hamas and were able to, to destroy their command in. So there's not much Hamas. There is a bit, but it's coming back now, but there's not much Hamas in the West Bank. Uh, there's mostly PLO and different, different factions different and stuff. Factions. But so Hamas is a terrorist organization, primarily in Gaza. Uh, maybe even to backtrack, people say, oh, you know, it's a fighting against occupation. Gaza isn't occupied, uh, occupied right? The Israelis 
there were Israeli settlements. I, I don't like the word. There were Israeli towns and villages that were there for, uh, some of them had been there for hundreds of years. Before the establishment of the state is Israel, there's always been also a Jewish presence over there. And Israel said, we can't leave soldiers over there protecting these, because all the time we're losing soldiers. And the prime minister at the time, Sharon, said, we're just going to withdraw from Gaza. We're going to give it all to them. And hopefully they'll make something good out of it. And that'll be the step first, the, not the first step. There've been many steps. Yeah. This will be a good step towards For peace. peace. Yeah. We'll leave them to Gaza. We, they left all the infrastructure. They had, uh, they had plants over there. They had a lot of agriculture that was going. They didn't touch anything. They're saying, we're leaving this to you. We're out. And of course they went in, they destroyed everything and they, they built a terror state over there. So this is, this is Hamas. Hamas is the, 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 the government or the terrorist organization who controls, who controls Gaza. Up north, we've got wonderful neighbors all over the place, right? <laughs> so we've got up north, we've got Hezbollah and, uh, in Lebanon. Um, northeast, we've got Assad in Syria, who's been butchering and ISIS, who've been butchering their people. In Jordan, it's been fairly quiet, and Egypt has been okay too from time to time but now we've had major wars with them that they try to annihilate us as well not so long ago you know the last one in the in the late 70s so hezbollah hezbollah are uh shiite like iran um they are in the government in parliament um in iran so it's funny because you have the you have the L lebanese army and then you've got Hezbollah. So you've got two big forces. The truth is Hezbollah is much more powerful, much stronger than the actual army. Hmm. But it's okay. hard. To, it's really complicated because it's hard to celebrate, to, to separate. On the one hand, Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, right, uh, that attacks Israel and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, shoots rockets and is preparing. But on the other hand, they're part of the government over there and they're, they're the dominant one, the, the, the dominant military force in the area. And it's very probable because like down south, we say oh, our war isn't with the Palestinians, our war is with Hamas. It's like saying our war isn't with Americans, it's with the American army. It's like, this is what like, the, you know, it's like the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor and we're saying we're not going to harm any Japanese. Our war is with the Japanese army. We're going to attack them, but we're going to keep all the Japanese. And like, it doesn't, that's yeah. not how war, how separate? Yeah. that's mm -hmm. not how war. So we have the same problem in, in uh, um, up north. So we have Hezbollah. They're not just a terrorist organization. They're part of the government over there. They control and run the south of Lebanon. Um, they're very well funded by Iran. All the missiles, everything comes, a lot of it comes from Russia to Iran, through Syria, and basically, if, if, you, if you open up a map, um, I know you Americans aren't very great with geography yeah, we're, we're what? outside of, uh, what? Outside of yeah. the U.S., but if you, go, if you go kind of up the, up the top of Israel, you've got, so we don't have a border with Iran, they're pretty far right, but if you go from Iran and you start going west towards the Mediterranean Sea, you're going to hit Iraq, and then you're going to hit Syria, and then you're going to hit Lebanon. And then you hit the Med Mediterranean Sea. So um, uh, Lebanon is on our northern border on the Mediterranean Sea. And basically, uh, Iran has a route that runs all the way through Iraq, all the way to the coast. So all the arms go through there. When you hear that Israel is bombing in Syria, often what we'll do, we'll, ar we'll bomb arms shipments that are coming into Syria directed towards, uh, towards Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And Hezbollah has been fighting um, they've been getting a lot of battle experience because they've been fighting inside Syria uh, alongside Assad. They've been basically pro propping his regime, uh, all the infighting that's happening in Syria with ISIS and with uh, like a hundred different factions over there. So Hezbollah, they're much bigger, much, much bigger army than Hamas. They have the latest Russian weaponry. Um, they have a lot more missiles. They have accurate missiles um, and... Yeah, they're, they're a real, real problem. So at this state, we're saying, you know, the south is overrun and the north is about to yeah, well, get overrun why, why too. Yeah. And there's another worry because the last big round that happened in but Israel... But has, has anything happened up north? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've okay. been shooting rockets. Okay. They've been okay. shooting this will get there, which is stupid. Okay. But but yeah, they've been shooting rockets all, all along. But it's again this sort of minimized conflict. So it's it's the they're trying to stay out of all out war. So they're shooting rockets at us. We're targeting just their rocket launchers or just their strategic bases, right? Mm. So they're but the north of Israel right now, that's what people don't realize. Like right now the north of Israel is evacuated. So thirty percent of the population in Israel are right now refugees. In our own land. Can you imagine that mm. in America, everybody who lives on the East Coast, we say, okay, you have to leave your houses now. And go, it's not yeah. safe. Right? And, but we're not going to attack the enemy just yet. We're just going to do pinpoint strikes and stuff because we're going to try to find a diplomatic mm. solution maybe with these terrorists. How long have like, they been evacuated for? Five months now. Okay. So, so, so since all this has kicked off, they've evacuated yeah, yeah, everything from yeah. the north. Is it, there are rockets there up north there okay. all the time. So... And again, to understand what the mindset is and what's happening in Israel right now on the Saturday as I'm getting, as, as, as the units are getting called up. <clears throat> in the last round of conflict with missiles, what happened was, so again, things that people don't understand. Israel is a democratic country. We have Jews, we have Muslims, we have Christians. One th a little bit less than one third of the population in Israel are Muslim. Put aside the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Palestinians live in the West Bank, Gaza, but <clears throat> Arabs, Muslim Arabs that live in Israel, in the heart of Israel, they're, they're full citizens just like me. There's no difference, right? Just like there's no difference between in, in the United States, which is a democratic country, just like Israel. There's no difference between a Muslim American, between yeah. uh, a Jewish American, between a Christian um, uh, American. We all, or between an atheist or whatever, Those we all Americans. have the same rights. Yeah. We're all, so the same thing, the, the Muslims that live in Israel, um, <clears throat> forget about just voting. They have members in parliament. They have judges. Um, they have supreme, there is a Supreme Court judge who's, uh, who's Muslim. Um, they were at a time the third largest party in politics over there. So mm. these are so it's a very small minority of them serve in the army as not a small minority but an important minority serve in the army as well but just like everywhere like look if you take if you take two million people which is about the that's about the population of muslim arabs in israel you take two million people you take maybe five percent who are extremists and want to kill jews and that sorry are islamist ex extremists you know, you're the you're you're the mathematician, right? We're getting we're getting what is it twenty thousand twenty thousand people? What's that? We said for the, uh, five, for the five percent five percent five percent uh, yeah. So, so, wait, I have to come clean. Normally, I can do this right. We've been. I'm, I'm not a math Asian. I'm, yeah. I'm not a math Asian. I'm not even yeah. I'm not even attempting it. That's not the it's Asian that I stuff. am. Yeah. 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 I think he's the man. We, get, we, we get the point. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's so not a small number. Yeah. 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 Really, nobody's gonna make an attempt. On it. It's that late. Uh, okay, it we'll is. leave it. We'll leave it. We'll it drop is. it. Okay. No longer. <laughs> you notice I didn't even look at you. Right? No, 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 Israeli citizens started, Muslim citizens started lynching and started shooting up Jews. So we're, so at this point, where's our, where's my, where's everybody in Israel's mind is the southern, south of Israel on the Lebanese, on the, on the Gazan border has been conquered. Hezbollah is about to start raining missiles on us and conquer the, the north. north. Okay. Internally, the Israeli, the, 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 some of the Israeli Muslims are going to start trying to take over and shoot. Basically like sleeper weak. cells that are like, scattered all inside. Okay. Yeah, it's mostly the, the, so there's a lot of like criminality, a lot of gangs, a lot of like mafia protection stuff, but they're also, so they're armed. They're armed, some of them. And this is the Middle East. It's, 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 this is the zoo, the jungle. The moment you smell, the moment there's blood in the water, yeah. everybody attacks. And that's, there's blood in the water now. So we're sure that we're about to have a war on all, all fronts, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. All fronts. That's, well, the, not just us. Yeah. Why do you think you guys sent well, sent uh, two aircraft carriers and all the navy o o yeah. over there and everything to say? And I have a few 
a few things to say about that in a second. Sure. But why, why did they... Because, look, Israel could have ended the war in Gaza mm -hmm. within five hours. Okay. But it's been going on for five months. Okay. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Why? We, ha we have the firepower. Okay. We can take out our enemy. It's just, just a question of how many civilians on their side are killed in the process. <clears throat> okay. So, and that's something I'm not, it's, I know it's one of, one of the questions. So, okay, so I wasn't happy. I personally wasn't happy when the Americans sent, uh, when, when, when maybe the Biden administration sent uh, aircraft carriers and everything to Israel. I didn't see, immediately I said, I said, this is not a good thing. You didn't see that as a helpful no. thing? No, okay. and I'll tell you why. Okay. <clears throat> because we were at a state of an existential threat. And the moment the American forces came in, they're like, you're not going to get demolished if you don't respond, so you, need to ta you can taper back your response. We should have responded. To, mm -hmm. We should have gone all-out war. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. thing would have been done. Mm -hmm. There have been less civilian casualties, and we wouldn't have left this mess for children, for like, this war isn't even near done. Yeah. But... What happened? They came in and Biden, look, he, he, he flew all the way to Israel and he told Hezbollah this. He told them, this is his words. He says, don't you dare. Okay? But they dared. Mm. And they keep on shooting missiles and the Americans are saying, yes, yes, but don't, don't, go into, don't go into Lebanon. We've got your back if it gets worse. We've got you back. So they're, it's like in the schoolyard. They're holding you back. And sometimes the best thing is to go and get the fight over with. Destroy the bully. Because otherwise, he's going to wait for you every afternoon and take your lunch money yeah. until you have the fight and you finish it. Right? So what's happening is with good intentions. But our friend, look, I also, look, we also have to understand the Americans have their, America, their obligation is to the American people. They have their own priorities. They didn't want an all-out war in the Middle East. I think it maybe would have been a good thing for Israel to be in at the state of an existential France because we could finally go out and take out our enemy. Instead, this thing is going to be fought over for who knows how many more years. Yeah. Can, so the, uh, uh, this kind of plays into one of my sure. Exotic sure. I was gonna. I had another question, but you know, no, me, yeah. there's so many of the questions. That I, I know. I, it's, <laughs> it, it, and so I'm having yeah. a really, I'm having a really hard time. So when every time I'm listening to you, you, you know, tell tell us this, these stories and these <clears> conditions <throat> and these things and these outputs and these outcomes is I'm trying to then immediately reframe to us, to the United States, to, to uh, how to relate, so, how to relate. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because yeah. again, I, I've only ever served in Afghanistan. Yeah. So far removed, so far removed from my home. Yeah. Never was I concerned <laughs> that my family was in right. danger. Or, Never were we things, attacked right, here in our backyard. Moved yeah. from my home for five months. Like, yeah, uh, not safe over here. You're going to yeah. go over here. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but so, my, my 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 question here so i'm just gonna read it word for word because my mind is i'm like operating at 105 percent right now um is there any piece of equipment tactic or approach that you either don't have or you can't or not authorized to use and you kind of reference this that you feel that could end the conflict quickly so whether that's in uh, trigger Polit warning political yeah yeah whether that is civilian casualties like that is yeah. no shit. That is a thing. Like, yes, it sucks. It's terrible. But I'll tell you what, if that's what it is and we're done, like we are done, done. I, I want to know. I, I want to know if that's the thing or is it, it right? Like take the gloves off fighting with the one hand behind the back. So I'm, I'm really curious. And again, no holds barred, no judgment. But is there something that you feel where it's like, man, if I just had just this, this, if I could just do this it's going to suck. It's going to, it's going to be painful. It's going to hurt, but let's just rip this bandaid off. What is that bandaid? Yeah. What is, what is, what does that look like for you? I think you said it perfectly. We're fighting with one hand behind our back. We've always been, been doing so. And why are you fighting with one hand behind your back? Um, <clears throat> look, the West, uh, mm -hmm. Israel, when I say West, I, I'm talking about America. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Europe. I'm talking about Israel. Well, I, I can't recall a war that, and Israel, uh, I'll get a bit more nuance on this. Um, they haven't won a war since the Second World War, right? America, again, lose, win. It's hard to look at that. Oh, America. But, mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, yeah, okay, so 
Europe, yeah. Put the Second World. Okay, so there was the Vietnam. Yeah, I didn't right? mind that. Not a war. Okay. Yeah. There was the. the some, would say, yeah. some would say. Some yeah. would say not a war. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but conflict. Okay. There we was, didn't win. Yeah, there was Korea, right? Yeah. That you know, North Korea <clears throat> still there, still Armistice. controlled. Yeah. Chinese, but yeah, there's no no real victory over there. Right. There's. Um, Afghanistan. I can't say that Don't Afghanistan is any better, any Iraq, different. Iraq, Afghanistan. Don't Afghanistan. Don't get me started. Yeah. Iraq. Yeah. So yeah, Israel. Like, Israel yeah. won a few wars. Obviously, right? We had the Six Day War, the Yom Kippur War. Brilliant victories. Brilliant military victory. The Yom Kippur War had devastating at the beginning. And uh, if you get a chance to watch the the movie, they recently had a movie about Golda Meir, which was Israel's prime minister, um, third prime minister during the Yom Kippur War. It's also interesting with Kiss- Kissinger. Henry Kissinger was, was a major figure of that also kind of held her hand behind her back. That's why at, initially we were surprised and we lost, the, we started losing the war and then we won it. But the reason I say this is that Israel's leaders at the beginning, when Israel was founded, they were more Soviets. Mm. They were fighting with the Soviet mentality. Israel became more, you know, with the kibbutzim. Israel was much more socialist when it was founded. Mm. And gradually it became much more capitalist, much more. So the initial leaders, the people who founded Israel, they were fighting these wars. A lot of them came from Russia, right? They were Russian Jews and they were fighting with the Russian mentality. Now our our leaders and the thought process in Israel is a very westernized country. Mm. And I think we forgot how to win wars, right? Because it's not about defeating it's not like you have an enemy and you have to go in and you have to defeat your enemy if this uh, my greatest fear is this this thing in gaza is going to play exactly out like afghanistan right we're going to go in we're going to fight we're going to get some vi- we're getting victory we're gaining ground right now we've destroyed about more than two-thirds of hamas but if we leave Ten percent of Hamas, it's like a cancer. Yeah, it's it's going grow to grow back. back, and we're going to be right back where we started. And all these casualties on the Israeli side yeah. and the Palestinian side is going to be for nothing. It's yeah. just going to happen. I think, and you know, I'm not a humanitarian. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend I'm a pacifist. Like I care about my people. I don't fight out of hate. I don't hate the Palestinians. I really, generally, don't. I love my family. I love my people. And if you threaten my country if you're a credible threat um and you want to kill my family my community my country i will kill you that's it's that simple there's no hate attached to it Mm -hmm. not killing you because i hate you i'm killing you because you put me in a position that that's what i what, what i have to do and we've lost this idea of destroying our enemy um this ends with Hamas releasing the hostages and surrendering. Everybody's, you know, every what is it, Rashida Talib, and everybody goes to the Oscars, and everybody's like, cease fire now. Hamas doesn't. We want to cease fire. They don't want to cease fire. If they want to cease fire, easiest thing, okay, release the hostages. Actually, that's it. Release the hostages. You'll get a cease fire. Hostage. I'm talking. You're holding babies. You're holding old women, old men. You're holding. Not even. You know what? Leave the soldiers, for, God forbid, no. Like, we're, we're not going to stop fighting until right, right, right. rescue everything. But you know what? All you have to do is release the civilians. Release the babies you're holding, because that's fucking evil. And you have a ceasefire. We'll stop. Like, they don't want a ceasefire. But how this thing ends, it will be a tragedy. More so for the Palestinians. But for us as well, if this doesn't end with... Hamas coming out and raising flags because otherwise just like the Taliban did they're just going to reach up and we're going to be back in square one oh. and we're going to be fighting this and my children are going to be fighting these same battles how do you eliminate all of them how, how do you not, how do you make sure okay. that that it does that this cancer is completely gone how do we how, how does that happen okay <clears throat> I know, it's a tough question. No, 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 I've I've got your answer. I've got your answer right here. So I come from a family of Holocaust survivors, right? My grandmother was in Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was in Bergen-Belsen. Most of my family was murdered by the Nazis. Okay. Some of my best friends are German. Okay. Uh, Not just best, like brothers. And I have a lot of, yeah, uh, yeah, I have a lot of people that, yeah, that I love 
A lot of people have shown a lot of support. Even now we get a lot of hate around the world in Israel, but we get so much support from people in Germany. Now, I think this is a pretty good analogy mm -hmm. because people think that the, the Second World War just broke out, that just Nazism. Much before that, the Hitler youth, like the soldiers fighting were educated in the Hitler youth. Right, not the beginning, but gradually the, the war was fought on over many years, and the Nazis were indoctrinated. Right. Same so condition. how do the okay. Germans go from full-blown Nazis that, that much hate yeah? to and, yeah. and I'm talking about real Nazis, yeah, not, yeah. not you know, not using the right pronouns, Nazi, but but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's just good. A little levity helps yeah. from time okay. to time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so how do they go from, from Nazis into a democracy, into, you know... It, it, so, the first thing is... And same thing with, right, with Japan. How does Japan have a complete culture change for an empire that, you know... It's, first of all, it's by defeat. First of all, it's by defeat. Okay. The Germans mm -hmm. were completely defeated. They surrendered, first of all. Unconditional surrender. Hmm. And then they went through a denazification. So the Allies took over the school curriculum. And they said, all this Nazi stuff hmm. has got to go. Hmm. And it took a generation. It's not something that happens fast. But it shows that this is possible. I do have... I don't know if I want to say hope, because I don't have a lot of hope. Because I don't, it's not because I don't believe it's possible. I don't really believe in us the Western world, our motivation Allowing to end to this. Yeah. I don't like, so for what did it take to defeat the Germans? Millions of civilian casualties. Mm -hmm. Millions, right? They bombed Dresden, just in Dresden alone. I don't have the n numbers with, I think like 70,000 people were killed in one attack in one city. Like, and nobody said, oh, you have to stop because of the civilian casualty. This is something that needed to be done, Right. In, in Japan, they dropped the atom bombs, yeah. right? Yeah. And so this, this two, is unconditional, unconditional yeah. surrender. I mean, how many, how many civilian casualties do we have with that? Hundreds, ah. of, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds yeah, of I'm like, thousands. Uh, yeah. yeah. This Initially. Is yeah. This is yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, the immediate, not, not the immediate even, explosion, not even, not even the follow through yeah. and the yeah. fallout. Yeah. yeah. Generation. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the bombs, but also the, the war. How long was the war going on in the Pacific, right? All the casualties, the civil, like, so... And we're fighting an enemy that, for them, every civilian casualty, it's a tactic. Like, it's oh, a benefit. And, and that's, that's on us. That's on CNN. That's on... If it wasn't shown, if it wasn't all these people are saying, ceasefire now, you know, Israel is genociding, stop. They're playing into Hamas, mm. right? If... Why are Hamas happy... Why do they put their military infrastructure inside schools, inside mosques, inside hospitals? Why do they put their tunnels underneath? Only for one reason. And it's, I want to say, I want to say your fault, right? The Americans, the space. Europeans. It's your fault. Because if we, as Israelis, attack that, then there's going to be pressure on the Israelis to stop. So it's very, very effective. It works. It's a strategy that works. If it wasn't on all the news they'd probably find better, you know, fortified positions. But for them, the best way is to put in a hospital because they know that we're going to avoid bombing hospitals. They know that we're going to avoid civilian, civ yeah. civilian targets. I've, so, I've seen that firsthand uh, in my time in Afghanistan where you know, all's fair in love and war, right? But then we have the law of armed conflict, LOAC. I know, I know you're, you're probably very familiar with LOAC mm -hmm. um, and our rules of engagement and things of that nature where... Uh, it's not fair. Nothing, nothing is fair. But as soon as one side starts playing by the rules, what's the very first thing the next side's doing? Yeah, breaking all the rules. Yeah. Was as, as an infantry story, I fucking hate it. It's the worst for me because there's a terrorist in the house, right? And we can drop the house on him, and nobody has to die. But you're going to send me in there to risk my life just in case there's some Palestinian civilians over there. So I'm willing to risk my life for my family. That's a given. But you're asking me to risk my life to reduce Palestinian death count, and that's exactly what we're doing in Gaza. 
We could have ended this war without sending a single soldier into Gaza. Just bomb it from the air. Mm. But we don't do that because we care. It's almost crazy. Like, it sounds cynical, but it's almost like you could, you could argue that we care more about Palestinian civilians than the side that we're fighting than their own than their own people do but again it it sounds crazy but if you go back and say well they're they generally believe that if children their children are killed in the process well they're martyrs and they're holy and they're going to heaven so you did a service to them by killing them it's okay that you know you got Palestinian civilians killed because that's Allah's will and they're going to go straight to heaven and you know you did a good thing in the eyes of God we have to understand that our morality is very very different from their morality and until we understand that we're going to make the same mistakes like Israel did hey let's let them come into Israel and you know gain economically because that's what we would want and that would stop us from wanting to fight an attack but they don't work that way at all yeah yeah i mean for me i just i mean to get political it's like i don't i just i don't understand how like we as the u.s have any right to come in and tell you guys what Schumer, you should be, Schumer what, speech yeah what you should be doing jesus i'm like when when 9 11 happened to us and we decided to go fucking all out was who was there anybody telling us? Do you imagine anyone just coming to no, us no. and be like, no, 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 no. Oh, no, you shouldn't yeah. do that. Uh-huh. No, no, no. What would our response be? Yeah. 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 It's like no, uh, nobody's telling us what to do. Why, why, do, are we? why do we think we can tell you guys what? I mean, yeah, that's, so just, argument, that, that, that's okay. crazy to me. The, the, argument, would be, the, the <laughs> argument would be, and I get, this, I get so much hate yeah. online, but it's okay. That's what the internet's for. Well, porn and hate. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Um, so one of the things were is the idea of that, you know, America is bankrolling Israel, that all the weapons come from Israel, that all the weapons come from America, that, okay. First of all, yes, absolutely. We get, we get weapons the, uh, from America. We get, um, you know, the, the America, America supports Israel. Um, we're friends and allies as countries. And that's awesome. And, and the relationship is, you know, we share the same values and, but what people are missing is two things. The first thing, maybe the most, f- first simple thing, America just doesn't just arm us. They arm the Egyptians, well, they arm yeah. Jor- Jor- Jordanians, we arm and they arm the it's Lebanese. Yeah. So business. the weapons that are being pointed at us are also coming from America. <laughs> and as far as the funding goes, it's about 50-50. So Israel, I, 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 I should have done, I, I don't know what, right. what, the, no. what the spending budget that America spends, but also the, it comes with strings attached. We don't get That's money. That's exactly. Right? We do, strings attached. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, get, we don't get money. You can't. You, we can't go and buy a French submarine. We have to buy it from us. We have to. We have to drive shitty jeeps, man. You know how much? A, sorry, I know. I, I had a really expensive jeep. I don't know what jeep you're getting, but my jeep is really expensive. I'd, I'd rather drive Still a Land shitty. Cruiser. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the Australian Army are driving in Defenders in uh, in Land Rovers, and man, the jeeps. They break, the, like, so they're two days in the field, one day in the shop. Two days in the field, uh, up in the shop. Okay, but, you know, but, okay, so the, the weapons that we're coming, Ospreys. yeah, is th- this also, you know, helps the American economy because all this, all this stuff that we're getting, so we're not getting we money. Need, yeah, we need all the help. We're, we're, we're getting, getting war is big business. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. so the enemy, our enemies are also getting American weapons. Um to the same budget. So I looked at it once, I did some search, and it's about equal. The amount of, of, of funding that Israel gets on the weapon, it's, it's, it's about equal to what uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, and... Uh, and um, uh, what are we doing now? Didn't we set up like some dock or something that now we're like, yeah. where we're supposedly... Yeah, bridging yeah. supplies like, over... Yeah, supplies. Okay. Yeah. Is, is, did that happen? Yeah, it's, it's happening in the it's process. Happening. It's, it's, happening. it's happening now. It's happening. Yeah. This is new. Okay. Currently, I knew actively don't even go. Place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what the? Yeah, yeah. making our own yeah. port, basically. The other important thing that we need to understand is, again, there's friendship, and there is the very close same values, but there's more than that. There's a strategic situation here. I mentioned before about the um, about Russia and its proxy Syria going through all the way through. So they're basically all of the northern 
Middle East. Going all the way, they've got a corridor that they control going through Iraq, um, through Syria, through Lebanon, all the way, all the way to the Mediterranean. That's all. A and the Russian, um, the, there's Russian bases all over Syria. Um, and the, the Russian forces in Lebanon too. Mm. So America has one ally that it can count on in the Middle East, that no matter what, right? The, the, the Saudis, they sometimes play ball with the yeah, Russians, yeah. sometimes play. Israel is the outreach. It's an outpost of democracy, of, of, civil, of, of Western values, and in the, the only East, one yeah. in the Middle East. And the thing is, you guys have bases and soldiers stationed in Germany. You have soldiers in Korea. You have soldiers in Japan. And they're there to protect these countries. You know where you don't have soldiers stationed and uh, there to protect? In Israel. Because we do our own fighting. We do our own dying. We don't need you to come here. Thank you for the weapons. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. But we're fighting. Yeah. We don't need... Mm -hmm. And that's always... That's always, been, that's always been the case. We have the same en enemies. Iran, their slogan everywhere, it's death to America, death to Israel. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy you. They hate you mm -hmm. just as much. The Houthi rebels, they're, they're, they're actual flag. It's not a very creative flag, right? The guys who are stopping all the shipping down through the Red Sea. It's not a very creative flag. It's something like long live Islam, Death to America, death to Israel. That's literally <laughs> in writing. So they didn't have a short and very sweet. good, yeah, short, short, and sweet. short and sweet. So the people that hate Israel, they hate it, they hate us because we represent exactly the same things that you represent. We're a threat to them because if their people want to start getting democracy and want to get freedom, they're going to lose their regime. And again, the Russian footprint, the Russian fingerprints are all over October seventh. Like this hmm. is, we are fighting the same enemy. And it hasn't always been like, again, this isn't official. Nobody knows. It hasn't been publicized, but there's a lot of we like very theory. good, we like theory, very good. <laughs> no, it's not theory. Yeah, no, there's I, very no. good sources and some, some dominant people from, from Israel, from the Mossad and from the CIA about, I think this goes about 10 years ago. Israel had maybe more than 10. It, no. Yeah. Excuse me if I don't get the dates exactly wrong. Israel had, a plan and a date, and they were going to launch an offensive against the Iranian nuclear project. Hmm. Yeah. We, we already destroyed, Iraq had a nuclear project, and we destroyed in the, 80s, in the 80s. We sent planes, so we've done this before. We're capable. Israel was going to, and Obama leaked the attack plan. And mm. that's, why it got, uh, mm -hmm. that's why it got called off. Interesting. So, yeah, it's complicated, but what, again, what I'm saying is, um, <laughs> Where did, where, where did we go, go, go into this? But yeah, it's, yeah. You said, why do the American, you asked, why do the Americans think that they have, you know, they say, you can do this. So I say that. Yeah, why do we the, have any right yeah, to tell so you Yeah, so the answer, the, the uneducated answer would be, well, you know, our weapons come from us, the weapons come from us. And that's exactly what they say. Biden's saying, okay, if you go into, uh, into Rafa now, which is the next offensive in Israel, you can't use American weapons. You know, we, we also have plenty of Israeli made weapons and things like that, but you can do it, but you can't use our weapons into, so that is a part of the, again, populist. I'm taking my populist. stuff back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking my back. toys and I'm yeah. going home. Yeah. 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 They're mine. Yeah. Give them back. Yeah. Part of the populist. So maybe that's the answer, but now that we understand a little bit deeper, it's not a very good answer. Why? I don't know. Well, the Europeans don't give us very much and, they, and it's the same thing. You can't, you know, in the UN, although well, the Europeans the tell you guys what to do too. Everybody tells okay, us what everybody they're doing. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah. The, more, the more you talk about but, but, it. But it's, a, but it's a danger because now if the world decides we're boycotting, if, if, if the Europeans won't trade with us, and if the, they, they start putting sanctions on through, from the UN, and if the Americans start sanctioning us and stuff, our economy will, will collapse. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it sounds like it's becoming more and more, or maybe always has been, just a big proxy war. Mm. Right, it's just a proxy war between the U.S. and Russia and these other folks using, you know, these smaller countries, right? That are you know allies for some reason or another, economic, religious, whatever that reason may be, to kind of wage war on each other without a direct connection, yeah, a, yeah. a direct you know 
just cool. outright okay. acknowledgement of a conflict between each other. Right? Are you f- familiar with the term the ca- cat's paw? Right, mm-hmm. the cat's paw? So it's like the, the Marines look looking at the confusion. Off. <laughs> I was going to say, look at the confusion <laughs> on Nick's face. Marines is looking lost. <laughs> yeah. What of Schrodinger's yeah. cat? Is that the same yeah. thing? Oh, don't yeah. even start. Uh, yeah. That was no, for no, Ryan. That was 100% for Ryan. Yeah, don't even cat's start paw. Cat's yeah. paw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why did you explain? You got it. To no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. Again, my mind is so blown. I have one singular question. I'm just waiting for my opportunity yeah. to ask it. So cat's paw. So, yeah. So it's, you know, if you want to get the honey or something like that, you don't want to get stung, you send the cat's paw to get it because the cat, like you don't take the sting. Sorry if I didn't. Uh, no, no, please. Yeah, <laughs> explained all the way. But the, yeah, that's the idea. You send them. So, really, the enemy is Iran. Our enemy is Iran. Uh, Hezbollah, uh, exactly like you said, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, the the Houthi in Yemen. They're so just all fingers all, on the same hand. All fingers or all tentacles are the same octopus. The head is in Iran, hmm. and Russia controls Iran just as much. Not officially, but the biggest trading partner of Iran is Russia. That's where they get their money. That's where they get their stuff. And it goes both ways. A lot of the weaponry used in Ukraine is coming from, well, it's interesting. A lot of the weaponry, it's, it's this axis, they're, they're together. A lot of the weaponry used in Ukraine is coming from Iran. Obviously, besides Russia, is coming from Iran as coming from North Korea mm-hmm. as well. So mm-hmm. we're seeing orders. And in Gaza, we also found quite a bit of weaponry from North Korea. The, the Iranian nuclear program and the scientists, the information is coming directly from North Korea, not from the Russian. So again, the same enemies. Now, I don't know if it, you said a, the proxy war, every war is fought differently, right? I, World War Three has began. Oh, uh, it's, I, it's, they, they, we're in it. Oh, we yeah. just don't, don't know we're in it. Yeah, but we, we're in it. They already started. There's TikTok, again, not, not to put, there, there's all these different software, like, hey, if you bought, you have, we have AliExpress, you guys have Timu, right? We have AliExpress, we have both, we have, yeah. have both. We got If it you all. bought a Chinese, well, so if you put one of those CCTV cameras at home, if you want to log, if you want to connect it, the first thing you need to do is you need to geolocate your phone. It won't let you install the software until, unless you agree to share your location. So the moment mm-hmm. you install the phone, the company, the Chinese company who set up the phone, they get a ping so they know exactly where the camera is. Mm-hmm. The Chinese, they, they collect. So Israeli, Mossad, the CIA, we collect intelligence differently. We find a very, spe- we know how to locate the information we want and we go in and we pinpoint with the uh, American, a little bit different. You guys have more power. It, it's somewhere in between. The, the Mossad, the Israeli, we don't have a, as much technological fire, firepower as you do, but we're very good with operatives. So we know how to get our people in exactly and, and to, like with a, with a tweezer to pick out exactly what we need. The Chinese, they just collect oh, everything. everything. And, then, and now with AI, that's really powerful. Because what's the problem? When you have too much information, yeah, how do you, how how do you, you shift yeah. through shift what's right? Process. But AI can do that. Yep. Machine yeah. learning. So yeah. yeah, it started. I mean, you guys have your, you know, you have... People on the terror watch list coming in from the southern border. Yep. Um, like I saw a video the other day of Iranians that got caught on the Mexican borders. How the hell do Iranians, you know, yeah. m- military age Iranians get, you know, to Mexico? You've got so like it's it's happening. Pause. OK, uh, we only planned on this going for like an hour or so, but part again, two. Uh, yeah, we're going to break this into maybe put uh, uh, Part one, part two, just so we can continue uh, with, I mean, we got Ron here for one more day. Uh, so we want to get as much selfish. information. We're selfish. We're selfish, yeah. We want to get as much information uh, as we can uh, out of him and, and, and to you guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the American Gunfighter Podcast. Be sure to listen next week. And please don't forget to leave us a review. Also, if there's a topic you'd like us to look into... Please be sure to leave a comment.